Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. It was day four, and I was hiking one of the seven wonders of the world with Pastor Joel. He had invited me, and I just said yes, not knowing what I was saying yes to. And it was probably the most difficult thing I've ever done in my life. But here we are. I had just climbed 11,811 feet two days prior. It was called the Dead Man's Pass or Dead Woman's Pass. We were up in uh, Peru at the Inca Trail in Machu Picchu uh, as just a few years ago. They had told me that um, we were going to be leaving. This is day four, the last hike. We were trying to get to the Sun Gate was the last hike. It was only going to be a two-hour hike, which was very simple compared to the previous three days. And so they said, hey, we're going to be up at 2.30 or 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm like, are you kidding me? This is crazy. We're all wiped out. We're exhausted. And then somebody decided, no, we'll just go ahead and leave at 5.30. I'm just like, yes. (laughs) So got up. The porters that were with us, they had created some awesome drink, boiled water and cocoa leaves. And we just took a few of those glasses, and I was like, yeah, I'm ready to do anything. <laughs> um, two hours, we were going up there. We finally get to right before the sun gate, what they call the sun gate. And I'm like, I was like, still a little ways. I and mean, I'm telling you, I'm exhausted. Like, I'm just barely just walking. All of us are. A bunch of about maybe 18 of us or so. And so it's like, man, just right over. So all of a sudden, I come right over that edge, and there it was. The city was right there. It was absolutely astonishing, absolutely beautiful. See some pictures right here. It took, what, 3,000? It took 30,000 men to build that, rotating, um, no, 90,000, rotating every 30 days. And it took them 30 years, I think, is what it said to do that. I got some notes here. Yeah, 30 years to build it, 30,000 men rotating every 90 days to build it. And then all the beauty was right there. It was just like, oh, my God, I don't know how these guys could do that. And still, it looks like it's just right around the corner, but little did I know, we still had another hour trek, and then we still had another two-hour tour. And I'm like, I'm I'm thinking we're going to be there in 15 minutes because I'm like, I'm exhausted. And I'm like, okay, I just can't wait to get down there, sit down, find a little room or a little store, and just chill put my feet in some hot water and somebody's hot water and just just relax and do nothing. Then I heard Pastor Joel's voice. Hey, once you get down there, don't rest. I'm like, what? (laughs) Don't walk into a store and just sit down and wait for the bus to come pick you up. I'm like, dude, we've been walking. Get up and walk around. It's like, we've been walking for four days. Give me a break. I barely knew Pastor Joel back then. I knew him, but I was getting to know him a whole lot more. He's a totally different person when he go on these trips right here. <laughs> so I'm thinking what he has in his head. And so I start walking, and I'm there another 45 minutes. And then we get there, and sure enough, I mean, the natural man wants to go inside a store and just do nothing. But I decided to listen to him for once. And I walk around, and I'm in different places. And it was so beautiful. In other words, basically what he was saying, he goes, hey, it took you four days to get over to this place. He goes, don't, don't waste it. Just sit there and bask in the beauty of it. Just enjoy what the accomplishment, all the pain, all the stuff, all the battle, you know, physically and mentally and emotionally, all of that. You just exerted yourself. Just put on some gratitude for a few more minutes and take in everything that's over here. And so we got to go do that. And I remember sitting down, finally, after the other two-hour tour or an hour-and-a-half tour uh, from this gentleman, gave us all this stuff. I sat down and took my journal out. And the journal, I wrote this. The fingerprints of God can easily be missed when there is pain all around. Isn't that the truth? Sometimes in life, you just have to put on some gratitude. And that's the same way it is with every single one of us. You might have not climbed a mountain like Machu Picchu. You might have not, but some, many of you guys have been climbing mountains for the last couple of years. The mountains in your relationships, mountains with COVID and now inflation and 
groceries and big reds are going up. All this stuff's going up. It's getting higher, and it's difficult. And we have too. It's not been the easiest. You know, we've been the most blessed here this past year. But in the middle of all that, it's been heartbreaking as well. Thinking that my brother has got cancer, and Pastor Joel, and we just buried my other friend last week, a couple weeks ago, and I've got an, an elder who was put in a nursing home, and not to even mention, there's stuff at the church, but not to even mention what's going on in the house in our lives. In the middle of that, I was reminded of this. It's like, hey, sometimes in life, you just got to put on gratitude. And you might be facing situations, and you've gone, uh, you wind up, you know, relocating new jobs. Some of you lost jobs. Some of you guys are relocating. You find yourself in Seguin, Texas. You're like, what the heck is going on here? Some of you guys have got more kids now because during the time you spent at home, you made kids. <laughs> and it's just a new season in your life. Some of you guys have overcome an addiction because somebody just started drinking. It's like, hey, I'm at home. Let's just party and work. Now you're overcoming a habit, or some of you guys might have, like we did, we just lost a loved one, my mom, just a few months ago. And some of you guys have had hard and difficult moments. It feels like that's the situation we are in, and many of us are tired and fatigued. But here's my admonition to you as a pastor here at Crossroads, and this is something that we say, and I think we got it from Mark Batterson. You never allow anything that's wrong in your life to keep you from worshiping what's right about God. Amen. Amen. There's always something beautiful to see. Yeah. <clears throat> and so you, you and I have both have, we're in this kind of the same boat, and we're in the same kind of a storm, but it, we're all riding our own boat in a sense. But we, we also can have, we can take a look at some things and just look, there is beauty in the middle of all this stuff, isn't there? And that's what I want to do this morning, just to kind of encourage you and give you some strength and encourage you according to the scriptures. The Apostle Paul understood that. He had went and preached at this place called, uh, in the Thessalonian, in the Thessalonica church. It wasn't a church then, but he went and preached for about three Sundays. And uh, there were some converts that, you know, came and believed and uh, were a part of being followers of Jesus. And But they got persecuted. And so he could only stay there while he had to leave. He had to bail and go back. And he was real concerned about the new believers that just come to Christ. And But he couldn't go back because the enemy was keeping him, preventing him from going back over there. So he sends Timothy, his apprentice, he goes, hey, I need you to go back and see how the new converts are doing and bring back word to me. So Timothy goes and he brings back word to him. He goes, hey, man, they're doing okay. They're doing well. It's a good report. But there's some stuff that they were contending with. These are new believers. Some of them were faint-hearted. Some of them were weak. Some of them didn't understand why Paul and Silas never came back because they said they were going to come back, but they hadn't come back yet. So they were wondering what was going on. Others had lost loved ones. And they didn't know if that was, man, were they following Jesus the right way? I mean, these are new believers. They're wondering if they were doing it wrong. Maybe I'm being punished. I got loved ones here that are dying. That's why the Apostle Paul in Thessalonians writes about the second coming and the rapture of the church and what have you. There was other individuals who, for whatever reason, they just stopped working. And they saw that uh, some of the believers were wealthy believers. And they began to just kind of skim off of their wealth and their resources. So there were certain things that he needed to address. So the Apostle Paul, in the middle of the situation that the Thessalonian church was facing, he addresses them. And there's this one passage of scripture that I want to bring to your attention. And because he understood. And it's in Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. It goes something like this. Now we exhort you, brethren. Warn those who are unruly. Evidently, there were some people that were doing some shenanigans. He goes, but comfort the faint-hearted. Uphold those that are weak. Be patient with everybody. Remember, these are all brand new Christians. See that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good, both for yourselves and for all. You know, I just, I just saw this. See what is good, both for yourselves. I'm like, oh. Sometimes we forget about just seeing what's good for ourselves. I don't know. I have a tendency. It's just like put others first, put others first, and I neglect myself, neglect my own house. Anybody ever been there? Oh, yeah. One person. Good. Rejoice always. Opposition you have. It's all over. It's around you. I can't come back to you because I'm being prevented to go back to you, but rejoice in the middle of it. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. He didn't say for everything, but he says in the middle of everything, in other words, sometimes in life, you just got to put on some gratitude. 
Amen? Amen. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. You know, it's easy to focus on what we don't have or wish that we had something someone else had. Uh, the day or the, the, the pain, the strain, the stuff that's all around us at times, it sometimes it just, it just prevents us from seeing the beauty that's right in front of us. Start having ingratitude and uh, anxiety and all kinds of stuff. As a matter of fact, the word anxiety means to be double-minded, to have, you know, divided mind. And so sometimes we're just, we're just in that funk and in that place. But in the middle of all the sh- stuff that's happening around us, there's got to be a flower somewhere. There's got to be something beautiful somewhere. And that's what I want to encourage you this morning. You know what's going on in your life. I know what's going on in my life. And believe me, as of yesterday, I'm like, there ain't nothing good going on in my life. Even though all around me there's people coming to the Lord, there's beautiful things all around me, but all of a sudden that stuff just trying to drown you to get you to focus on it. Anybody ever been there? Why do they say that? Why do they think that? What's going on around the world? Who is our president? Anyways, on and on, all kinds of stuff. That was funny, huh? (laughs) But there's always something beautiful. In America, you know, we celebrate and we set aside one day to give thanks. But in the scriptures, the Bible encourages us to give thanks always. Amen. So this morning, I just want to share some scriptures with you. And then we're going to give thanks and just enjoy our this morning we're going to take communion together as a family we're going to rejoice we're going to go have some awesome turkey and corn and get all fatted up (laughs) and just there's just a beautiful there's so many good things to do and I'm going to have Pastor Joel come up and share his story my wife's going to come up and share some things we're going to sing this old song anybody remember this old song named give thanks we'll do that and then we'll receive communion together is that okay but let me encourage you with the scriptures Psalms 107, let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. Philippians 4 says, don't be anxious about anything, but in everything, in everything, the same thing, right? By prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Psalms 95. Come, I love doing that. Let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of my salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving. Extol him with music and song for the Lord is great, the great king above all gods. Colossians, the third chapter, let the peace of God rule your hearts to which indeed you were called in one body and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. I love this next passage. This is Hebrews 12. It says, as members of the church of the firstborn, all our names have been legally registered as citizens of heaven. Isn't that beautiful? Man, that just gives me hope. Since we're receiving our rights to an unshakable kingdom, we should be extremely thankful and offer God the purest worship that delights his heart as we lay down our lives in absolute surrender, filled with all. Isn't that great? Hebrews 13, therefore by him let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God, that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. But don't forget to do good and to share for such sacrifices God is well pleased. And Psalms 107 says, oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Is there any more? Oh, there is more. Oh, we already did that one. That's the one where Paul says, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. So this morning, I want to encourage you, (laughs) encourage you to look for that. When we play this song in a little bit, think and reflect where you're at right now. And don't reflect on the stuff that you don't have. Don't reflect on the stuff that's going south. Look for that nugget. Look for that thing. Look for that Thing that you can be proud of or that you can say, man, you know what? Thank you, Father. If you've got someone who loves you right next to you, thank him. If you've got someone who's on this pulpit that loves you, thank him. Yeah. If you got, you know, just there's something beautiful in your life that's happening 
So don't get caught up in all the stuff around you. This is the season to be grateful, to open up your heart and receive all the beauty that's around you. You know, when we were up there in the mountains, man, the pain was so, it was just like throbbing. Everything was throbbing around me. But whenever Pastor Joel talked about that, those last 45 minutes were the most beautiful. I remember just stopping and taking pictures of little flowers. Just little, little bitty things. It's like, oh my gosh. The view that we had, only people who went on that trek could see the views that we had. When we got down there, there were people who got there. I was like, how did all these people get up here? Well, they got up there on the bus. And they were like, oh, that's beautiful. Oh, that's awesome. I'm like, man, you have no idea what's beautiful and what's awesome. You cheated. We've been down here four days going up this thing. And these see beautiful things that no one can ever see these things. No one can ever erase them from my heart and my mind. And I'm so grateful even for that. So this morning we're just going to talk about some of those things. So I want to ask Natalie, you want to come up real quick, babe, if you want to. And there's a mic somewhere, right? And just share what's happening in your life. I don't know where have you have been. haven't seen you in a while. Stop. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so... God is good, right? I mean, every, all the time. He's always good, even in the midst of the things, in the midst of the things. Um, it was um, a couple of weeks ago, we, w- we had a couple of conversation, and I was able to share with the women, and I was actually encouraging their faith, their faith walk. And um, I started thinking about that in life for Pastor Marcus and I. Our faith walk, t- to me, has been like, automatic. I I know that I'm not trying to sound haughty by saying that, but when you come from a place where God has rescued you uh, from so much, there, there is something that gets built in you where like in all things, he is good. You know, even, even in the stuff, like you kept saying earlier in the stuff, I still count things joy because I'm able to experience and grow and learn from the things that um, God has done. And so I wanted to share something. I asked my cousin, Kim, who's here. I um, was, with that day that I was speaking, God said something so profound. It came out of my mouth, but it was not my thoughts. And I wanted to share it with y'all. Um, it says this, my faith is not in the things I can change but my faith is in the God who can change all things. Isn't that good? Preach it. God can change all things. And if you yourself don't find yourself being thankful for the things, and I don't mean the good things, but I mean the things that go wrong too, it's hard to pour into others when you yourself are lacking. So it's so important to find that place of thanksgiving And now we're waiting. Um, We're still in a waiting game. So I know the valleys and I know the mountaintops. And I also know about going right back down and starting all over again when it comes to um, my daughter. Our oldest daughter has struggled for 15 years of uh, meth addiction. And it's been really hard. But in the midst of that, God has showed me such beautiful grace and mercy. To see her, not how I see her, but to see her the way he sees her. And so you can see that even in your, maybe your life is not extreme like that, but in the little things, God wants to show himself. So I'm thankful for that. And my second Thanksgiving thing, and then I'll be quiet. Okay. Let me get you a napkin. (laughs) You mean a tissue? A tissue. Um, I'm thankful for all of you. Amen. I really, really am because you guys don't even know that sometimes we're struggling ourselves and one of y'all will come up and give us a little hug and say just something so minute maybe to you, but for me, it means a lot. So I want to say thank you to y'all being my family because family is important to me and I love y'all. That's it. Pastor Joel, you want to come on up? Thank you, babe. She reminded me of something. When we climb together, I'm like, let's go, babe. This is what I'm used to doing. And she's like stopping and looking at this flower. And it's like, come on, let's go, woman. 
Anyways, it's not good. Oh, you got it? Yeah. Hey, man, it's good to see you. What the heck? Hey, Jeffrey, can not... you pop that Thessalonians verse back up? You know, I was thinking about something, Pastor Marcus. Yeah. When, when you go on those trips and it's really hard, the Peruvian guides have this really bad habit. It's a really bad habit of lying to you. It's true. They'll be like, oh, it's, it's only an hour away. 30 minutes. I wrote that in my journal. But... How far? That's 30, 30 minutes. minutes to a Peruvian that like runs the trail. It's like three hours for us. And I was thinking about this, comfort the faint hearted. Yeah. And you know, you don't comfort the faint hearted by lying to them. <laughs> you tell the truth, but you, but, but I found this with people when I encourage them. I say, look, yeah, it's really hard. And honestly, it's going to be even harder tomorrow. But look how far you've come. And you're a lot stronger than you think you are. That's right. I've seen that over and over again on the trail. People always are like, well, do you size people up when they first come on a hike? And I go, I've learned you don't do that. Yeah. Because oftentimes it's the ones that are in the, but honestly, the, the one guy I had to haul into Machu Picchu on a stretcher with four of us holding him on our shoulders was the most in shape guy we had ever had on a trip. He had won the Tough Mudder Nationals. Um, but then there's guys like Pastor Marcus, man. And they truck in there one step at a time. Like, they, he's not going to make it. And, I know yeah, he's not going to so make you, it. You never, you never size somebody up because it really starts right here. You have the determination in your heart. And you don't lie to them. You tell them the truth. So uh, let me tell you a crazy story about the truth. Um, this week, I, the, you know, they found melanoma on my back. Like, the surgeons were like, you know, we had a bunch of doctors. Two or three said, you need major surgery. So we went to the major surgery um, and they got me all you know, I had to wear that stupid gown where you're like basically naked and um, it was freezing cold that day so I'm like <laughs> and they you know poked me like 17 times to find a place for the uh, IV get me all prepped I'm laying there and the surgeon walks in and he says Joel we found no melanoma in your body <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. But, Why'd you cut me? But he goes, I really, I really, he's like, I'm going to be honest with you. I think I need to cut anyway. I'm going to just cut around that general area just to make sure everything's gone. And I had a decision to make. Of course, you know, I, was like, I didn't know what to do, but I was like, all right, Lord, what do I do here? I felt like the wise thing was trust the surgeon. And it's a weird thing. I've been trying to figure out like this whole situation was so bizarre to me because I believe God healed me. But you also want to use wisdom. So I, I wish I could tie a bow on it and be like, and then we didn't do surgery. But they did surgery, and it hurt like, you know what? But uh, so I've got a four-inch cut here for basically nothing, I think. I don't know. <laughs> I wish I could tell you, you know, like they didn't have to cut into me. But they did anyways. We thought that was a wise thing to do. But through all of this, the thing that I'm the most grateful for, I will never forget this. We... We went down to Corpus. There was a doctor, Corpus area. There was a surgeon there that we trusted. And uh, we stayed at a hotel the night before because we had to get up early and go to this like, hospital. And Pastor Marcus texted me like right when we got in the hotel. And he goes, hey, did, did you make it to the hotel? And I was like, yeah, yeah, we made it. He's like, I'm here. I was like, what? And he was at the hotel. And he sat with Emily during the surgery. And I have never felt so much love in my life as over the last two weeks from all of you. I'm thankful for you. Amen. Thankful for this pastor. I don't know how you, I don't think you guys realize how much they do. You know, we had a family in our church a few years ago. They had to go to Boston for some surgeries for their child. This guy got on a plane and flew up to be with them for that. That's just the way they roll, Marcus and Natalie. And I am so grateful for them. I do agree, Gina, to take a little better care of yourself sometimes yeah. than other people, right? And sometimes they like they like sacrifice themselves for everyone else. It's true. But I am so grateful for that. And um, you know, it's it's easy to be grateful when everything's going good. That's right. Yes. But you really show gratitude. Like it's really hard to be grateful when the weather stinks, and you're freezing, or they're about to cut into you, or you got the diagnosis, or your kid's just not getting better. Um, 
but in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus sure. concerning you. And I'll tell you this, one of the best things you can do is, is if you can't find anything to be grateful for, look back at how far you've come. That's right. That's good. That's good. Yeah, and you're, look, you made it. You made it this far, and God didn't bring you this far to ditch you. That's right. One of the most encouraging things I heard was last week, Johnny Arrow came up to me. He goes, I was praying for you, brother. He says, and I don't know if this is the Lord, but I feel like I felt deep in my heart that he said, Johnny, I got too much invested in that boy to throw his ass under a bus. <laughs> Sounds like little Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> and I literally was standing back there. I was like, I'm going to be all right. <laughs> so, Amen. I am so grateful for all you guys, man. You guys have been so generous, like food and providing like everything y'all done. All the emails. I haven't been able to reply to all of them. I probably got 300 emails from y'all. So thank you so much. And I, it's just, man, it's been a wild ride. I still, I'm still trying to figure out like what just happened. Yep. But I know that as the Lord is revealing it over time, um, I'm going to be even more grateful for what he did as he turns all yeah. things together for the good of those who love him. Love you, love you, love you. Um, can I just give you a couple of nuggets real quick? Can you throw that number one? There are some other things that I wrote in my journal. I just want to share some, because this, this has to do with the stuff you're facing in life, the challenges that are going on in your life. But there's a couple of things that I learned, and I wrote these things down. There's a difference between um, a plotter and a plotter. Stay steady. Staying steady and faithful, one step in front of another will finally get you to your destination. These are other things I wrote down. In other words, allow grace, God's grace in your life to set your pace. Don't, don't, let your, don't set your own pace and then ask for grace to follow you. Let him lead you. Pastor Joel didn't know. He's like, Why, what's going on here? It's like, I don't know, but we better give God the glory. Otherwise, you don't want to go through this thing again. You don't want to give credit to man. Number two, don't worry about anyone else's personal goals. You know, when I get up there, you got these guys, man, they're, they're in crazy shape. I'm like, oh, man, this dude's awesome. Next thing I know, so you want to, the first day, I tried to match their pace. Man, I'm like passing out. I actually got a porter by me, like, here, here's 20 bucks. He had the oxygen tank. I'm like, stay here with me. <laughs> Don't worry about anyone else's goals in life. Set your pace and rhythm and stay faithful. Competition is good, but if you run another per, another's personal race, it can get you winded and ultimately get you out of the race. You have your race you're running right now. Stay faithful. Stay steady. Do what God's doing in front of you. You don't have control of the timing. You want to, but you don't. Number three, enjoy the journey to your destination. It's about the process, like Natalie said, not just the finish line that needs to be paid attention to. What he's doing in you is as you move towards your goal. What is he doing in you? After you completed this phase in your life, can you remember any lessons along the way? Number four, the more you focus on your pain, the harder the trek is. It can become unbearable, but look around. There's always something beautiful. Number five, I've got 17 of them. I'm not going to share them all with you. <laughs> Encourage someone else's personal race. It's amazing what little encouragement from someone else who's been there does to the heart, mind, and body of a man. I remember these guys' names, the guides that were with us, Fernando, Ephraim, and Americo. Remember them, Joel? They were always there every step of the way. You can do it, Pastor. You can do it. Question, who's encouraging you? You have someone next to you that encourages you. Number six, don't be embarrassed when you come short of breath along the journey. Some of us need some help. We need one another. If you need oxygen, take it in. Pause, rest, breathe in, then move forward. It's not possible to maintain an all-out pace and finish strong. And then the last one, you will never appreciate level ground unless you're willing to climb mountains and descend into valleys. Amen. Take a risk. Be bold. Be brave. You're on this mission for a reason. It's to glorify him. Remember that. It's to glorify him. If you are ever in the Seguin area, come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. 
May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings.